In the previous video, we have implemented our block helper script and now finally we are able to fill in our world script and to generate our visualizations for our voxel world. So let's get started. First of all, we will open up our world placeholder script that we have created a while ago. Great. First thing that I will want to do is delete start and update. This will be a mono behavior script and we will need to have a couple of fields here. I'll paste them. First, we will have a public int that will be map size in chunks. So to have a way to measure our map, we can measure it in chunks because we may not be able to uh, render with our system half of our chunk. We need to create a whole chunk. That's why we have a map size in chunks and we are going to simply uh, multiply it by the chunk size that we have below public in chunk size and chunk height this will be 16 and 100 next we're going to have a public in water threshold this will allow us to create a water surface at some specific height of our chunk next we have a public float noise scale this will be 0.03 f so this will be a float value and this will be useful when we want to generate our noise uh, using the pearly noise uh, from the mathf library of unity we are going to create a more sophisticated way to generate a noise value and to generate our terrain in the next section of this uh, series for now we are going to use this to generate a uh, example terrain and we are going to have public game object chunk prefab reference the prefab that we have created in the previous video or a couple of videos ago and we will have two dictionaries those will be the dictionary of the vector3int and the chunk data and vector3int chunk render. The second dictionary will allow us to simply remove the chunks from our map and the first one will allow us to store the data about chunks that we want to generate on our map. This will be much more useful in the second section of the series. For now we are going to only use those to store the data to render our chunk and remove them if we want to regenerate our map. Now. To generate our world, first we will need to generate our chunk data. Now we are generating it in this fashion because later on when we in third section generate our code in a way that is multi-threaded, it will be much more easy to generate the data first and then only to render it when we have all the data created. So we are going to first of all take care of generating our data. So I will create a new method here and this method will be called private void generate voxels this will take in the chunk data data this will be a new data that we create and we are going to loop for each x and z coordinate and we are going to loop from 0 to chunk size and from 0 to chunk size so we are looping through the coordinates in the chunk local space so it doesn't matter where the chunk is placed in the world we are setting the chunk the voxels of our chunk in the local space of our chunks from zero to the chunk size next we are going to simply use the mathf.perly noise to generate our noise value that we will use to set the level of our ground now we are going to talk more about the noise and generating our different uh, terrain using this uh, noise function in the second section for now we are going to simply pass to it our world position of the chunk data plus the x value from the uh, for loop and the z value for the for loop for the second parameter as our mathf.perly noise takes x and y value and generate our float value noise value between 0 and 1 and the noise is continuous so that we have this continuous wave like shape for our terrain next we are going to multiply this by the noise scale that we have provided at the top just to see how our generator generates our voxel world we are going to do the same for the z value for the second parameter of our mathf.perly noise method. Next, we will need to, of course, um, round it to int value. And to do it, we know that noise value is between 0 and 1. We multiply it by the chunk height and we round it to an int value using mathf.round to int to get the integer value. So on this uh, level, there will be the grass tile or dirt tile generated. Above, there will be water or air, and below, there will be dirt. Next we loop for each y value from 0 to the chunk height and since we are only considering now the chunks that are above the ground so 
Those chunks contain the some ground and the ground level and the air above the ground. And for those chunks, we are going to loop for each Y value and we will need to create a block type. This will be basic block type, so dirt. Dirt will be always spawned if our Y value is below the terrain height generated from the Perlin noise. So this will be the ground position integer value. If Y is greater than this ground level, we are going to check the water threshold. If we are below the water threshold, we want to generate a water body uh, below this uh, Y value. Else we are going to generate the air voxels. Those will not generate any meshes. And the uh, water will be only generated when it meets uh, the air uh, voxels. We will see the results soon. Else, if we are on the ground level, we want to generate the voxel type equals block type dot the grass dirt. Block type we have generated in one of the first videos of the series, so we are going to generate the grass dirt voxel. And if none of those are met, we are going to use the default block type dot dirt. And all we need to do is call the chunk, our static class to work with our data, our chunk data. We are going to call set block. We are going to pass the data, the position x, y, and z taken from this loop. So this is in the chunk coordinates. And we are going to pass the voxel type to set the block type in our blocks array in our data. So if we go to our chunk data, go to the definition, we are going to set this inside our block. And we are going to set the appropriate index with the type that we have generated. Great. Now, to use this, we will need to have a new method. A one that will be called by us using a button. So let me paste it above. And this will be called public void generate world. So to generate our world, we first need to take care of what was previously generated. That is stored in the uh, chunk data dictionary and chunk dictionary. So we want to clear the chunk data dictionary. We want to destroy all the chunks. To do this, we are going to look for each chunk render chunk in the chunk dictionary keys. So this is the key, so are, those are the chunk renders. And we are going to destroy the chunk.game object to destroy all the chunks that are present in our Unity project. Next, we are going to clear this dictionary. And here is the meat of our... And here will be the main code of our method. We are going to loop for each x, and actually this should be z, so let me rename it to z. We're going to loop for each x and z value uh, in the map size, uh, up until the map size in chunks value. And we are going to generate the data. Chunk data, data equals new chunk data. We are going to pass the chunk size, chunk height. The world reference will be this world, and the uh, position will be vector3 int x so this is the value of zero to chunk map size in chunks this was six by default times the chunk size so this would be zero 16 32 and so on because our chunk size is 16 the same will be with the z value and y value will be zero since we are generating our chunks above the ground next we're going to call our uh, method generate voxels for this data to generate the data and we are going to add it to our dictionary. Let me fix the issue in the in editor because I have forgotten one parenthesis. In this for each loop, we are going to loop for each data in the chunk data dictionary dot values. And we are going to generate our mesh data by calling the chunk get chunk mesh data method. If you recall, we didn't finish implementing this method. Right click and select go to definition. And here we have this comment fill later. So I'm going to fill this. We are going to use the loop through the block method that we have implemented as the first method of this chunk class. And this will simply loop for each block in our chunk data. So we pass the chunk data, x, y, and z coordinate. And we are going to uh, d receive those from the, from the for loop that is inside our loop through the blocks. And we are going to then take it as and set our mesh data to be equal to our block helper dot get mesh data again this is the method that we have implemented in the previous video and we are going to pass all the data so the chunk data x y and z mesh data and chunk data dot blocks and we are going to select the specific block using the get index from position method 
and we are going to pass to it another uh, set of data. And since we are passing to it the current mesh data, we are updating this mesh data and returning it as the new mesh data. So at the end, we are going to receive all the voxel mesh data for our single chunk, and we are going to return it so that we can generate it. Now, unfortunately, there is one more method that we need to fill in at the bot at the top of this class. We had this get block from chunk coordinates method. And if this wasn't in range of our current chunk, we have thrown an exception because we had no way to access the neighbor chunks in our world. But now we have our world script that has the dictionary of all the chunks, so we can ask the world about the correct chunk that we, have ac uh, we should access to get this block. And this is useful when we want to generate our blocks, our mesh data for the blocks at the edges of our chunk, because maybe there is another chunk and it has air or ground on this block that is the neighbor of our current chunk block and we need to know what is the type of the block that is neighboring this current block in the second chunk in the neighboring chunk so to do this we are going to de delete this throw statement since this will break our code and then we will need to add here some code so i'm going to paste here then a callback to our chunk data so this is the data that we have passed and it has the reference to the world that it is using and we are going to generate a new method get block from chunk coordinates inside our world and we are going to pass basically the same data that we have passed here so chunk data and instead of the x y and z which are in the local chunk space we are going to add to them the chunk dot world position dot x y and z so that we have the block coordinates in the world space instead and uh, we can select our get block from chunk coordinates method and i can right click quick actions and i can select generate method inside our world and this will be now generated but we will need to fill it in Control s to save your script and i'm going to right click and go to the definition of this newly created method so here we will need to access the correct chunk for our block to be able to get the type of it so let me paste the code here we are going to call vector 3 int dot position equals chunk dot chunk position from the block chords. Again, this is not what we have in our chunk, so we are going to create it, but we are going to pass here x, y, and z instead of this v1, v2, v3. And now we are going to right click on this method and quick actions and generate this method. This will be getting the chunk position from the block coordinates. So right click and go to the definition all we need to do here is to take our coordinates x y and z of the specific block in world coordinates and we are going to create a new vector 3 int called position equals new vector 3 int and we are going to floor to int the value of x divided by the floor float world chunk size so if we know that the chunk size is 16 and the x is 33 then we divide it by the 16 and we get the 2 point something. So we are going to uh, floor it to int and we are going to uh, get 2. So we are going to multiply 2 by the world size, uh, chunk size, so it is 16. We are going to get the position 32 and 32 will be a valid position of our chunk. So this is how we are going to get the correct positions of our chunk. We are going to return it and if we go back to our world script, so now we need to access the chunk data for this chunk. To do this, we are going to access our chunk data dictionary dot try to get value. And this method allows us to pass the key and pass the uh, chunk data value as the with the out keyword. So if this finds this value, it will output it to this reference value here to the chunk data. So if this dictionary doesn't get this value, doesn't find this key, it will return null. And uh, if this is null, we are going to return the block type dot nothing. So we do not render anything on this position. So we do not render the face of our current block. Else we are going to get the position of our block from this chunk that we have found. So we are going to use chunk dot get block in chunk coordinates. And we are going to pass this container chunk as the chunk to uh, chunk data to find this block in and we are going to pass the new vector 3 int x y and z 
Those are the positions in the chunk local space of this block. And we are going to pass here the x, y, and z value world position. So this will give us the correct position of our block. And all we need to do is to return our chunk, get block from chunk coordinates. Again, we are going to pass the chunk data as the input and the position of our block to get the correct block type from this chunk. Or if this chunk doesn't exist, we are going to re receive the block type dot nothing. Okay, this was a lot, but we are almost done. What we need to do is select file and save all, just to make sure that we have saved all the scripts. And we are going to go back to Unity. Now, if you have any errors here, you may want to download the full project from the Google Drive or check the scripts against the GitHub link. Both links will be in the description of this video. What we will need to do now is right click, I have this cube, I'm going to delete it, right click and create an empty object in the hierarchy and I'm going to call it world and I'm going to reset the transform of it, reset and I'm going to drag here our world. We have the map size in chunk 6, chunk size 16, height 100, water threshold, let's set it to 39 and we're going to have the noise scale equals 0.03 now we need only to add the chunk prefab, which we have saved in the assets. In my case, we're going to drag it as the chunk prefab. Next, we are going to right click in the hierarchy UI and create a simple button. Now I will select the canvas first and select the canvas scalar UI scale mode and scale with screen size. Next, I'm going to select the button, select the anchor point, hold shift and alt to anchor it in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to change the text to be uh, regenerate okay and all i need to do is select our button add on click listener uh, and we are going to add our world as the object and select our world and select generate world as the method that will be called now let's save our scene and if everything went well we can simply press play and click our uh, regenerate and we will have our world generated and it is all made out of voxels. If you select one of those pieces, you will be able to see that this is a single chunk. If you don't want to see this UI, select the layers and uncheck uh, the eye icon for the UI. And you can see that this is just a set of faces, it's a single mesh. If we rotate around, we can see that none of the faces around this were generated to save our computational power. We have our water generated on the surface and this is transparent, this is using a different material, the material one, water material, so we can see through it and it creates an illusion of our water. What we have achieved in this series is a voxel engine that, gen that can generate us the voxel world. Now if we want to modify our world, let's select our world and change the noise value to be something like uh, 0.09 and let's click regenerate and you can see that it takes quite a while to generate our world okay and again, let's try it again with this uh, some 0.01 value now just to show you how much you are saving uh, by not rendering all the faces let's select one of the chunks here and you can see that those are two meshes this is one uh, is the land the ground and the second one is the sub mesh of the water and if we select in the inspector the chunk render script at the bottom if we select show gizmos we should be able to see that this is actually our chunk so this is our chunk and we can see that it goes pretty high and if we were to render this part especially this part below our ground with faces it will be much more faces that we currently have rendering only what we need. Okay, thank you very much for watching this series. In the next one, we are going to work on polishing the way we generate our world. So hopefully it will look much better than we, what we currently have. Again, if you have enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I would really appreciate your support through Patreon or by purchasing my Udemy courses, the links will be in the description of this video. Thanks to all your support, I will be able to create more free YouTube Unity tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.